In a recent episode of his widely followed podcast, Joe Rogan delved into the dark and unsettling world of Hollywood, shedding light on the manipulative tactics employed by former film producer Harvey Weinstein towards aspiring actors. The discussion, which was both revealing and disturbing, touched on the power dynamics within the entertainment industry and the lengths to which individuals might go to achieve stardom. In the podcast episode, Joe Rogan explored the deeply unsettling and controversial revelations about Harvey Weinstein and the pervasive culture of exploitation in the entertainment industry. He made promises, but failed to deliver on them, further perpetuating the cycle of deceit and manipulation. So he'd say, hey, I'm gonna make you a star. The downfall of Harvey Weinstein marked a pivotal moment in the entertainment industry. One of the most chilling aspects of Weinstein's alleged actions, as highlighted by Rogan, was his unsettling modus operandi. According to Whitney Cummings, a prominent comedian and actress, Weinstein exhibited a disturbing pattern of behavior. He would lure young and aspiring actors with grandiose promises only to subject them to a horrifying condition. Thus, these individuals would receive various privileges, but at the cost of having to spend intimate time with him occasionally. At the heart of Weinstein's manipulation, meticulously recounted by Rogan, lay a disturbing quid pro quo scenario. Allegedly, he enticed aspiring actors with the promise that, by engaging with him, they would secure the coveted opportunity of stardom in his movies. However, once persuaded, these actors became vulnerable to further exploitation. In addition to this, Rogan unveiled Weinstein's strategy of showering these individuals with attention and privileges, thereby ensuring their subservience. However, this lavish treatment came at a steep cost as Weinstein demanded even more intimate and private encounters. It created a chilling cycle of manipulation and exploitation, leaving these actors feeling utterly trapped. Furthermore, in order to maintain the facade of genuine affection, Rogan claimed that Weinstein would coax these actors into sending him affectionate and even romantic emails. These messages, superficially, appeared to be indicative of a loving relationship. However, beneath the surface, the actors held deep resentment towards Weinstein for the compromising situations in which they found themselves. Thus, they would send him emails filled with lovey-dovey language, all the while harboring a profound hatred towards him. It is truly disheartening, as pointed out by Joe Rogan, that certain actors would even go as far as befriending Weinstein in the hopes of advancing their careers through the Hollywood gatekeeper. One of the most shocking revelations, as discussed by Joe Rogan, is how both male and female celebrities found themselves entangled in his manipulative web of misconduct. Matt, a notable Hollywood A-lister, achieved remarkable success with his collaboration with Harvey Weinstein on the critically acclaimed film Goodwill Hunting. His rise to stardom was meteoric, and he openly acknowledged that Weinstein's support played a significant role in his journey to success. Ben Affleck, a close friend and collaborator of Damon, played a significant role in the production of Goodwill Hunting. Affleck was closely associated with Weinstein during this time. In the aftermath of their collaboration, both Affleck and Damon experienced a remarkable ascent in their careers. In 1997, while accepting his Oscar for Best Screenwriting with Matt Damon, Affleck credited Weinstein saying, it's incumbent of us to thank, um, Harvey Weinstein, who believes in us and made this movie. These acknowledgments highlight the significant influence Weinstein had in shaping the careers of these renowned actors. However, Joe Rogan's analysis dives deeper into the intricate dynamics behind the scenes. He posits that the relationship between Weinstein and other male actors like Damon and Affleck may not have been purely professional, but rather involved a complex exchange blurring the lines between ambition and personal compromise. This perspective challenges our understanding of power dynamics within the industry and raises thought-provoking questions about the choices made by those who benefited from Weinstein's support. Within the Weinstein scandal's context, it becomes apparent that the power dynamics in Hollywood extended beyond the relationships between influential producers and aspiring actresses, even male actors faced situations where their ambitions were entangled with the challenges of navigating an industry notorious for its predatory practices. The complexities of this environment posed obstacles to their success. Moreover, the candid acknowledgement by Matt Damon and George Clooney of their awareness surrounding Weinstein's behavior brings to light a troubling culture of silence that permeated within the realms of Hollywood. During an interview on Good Morning America in October 2017, 
they found themselves in a difficult position due to their friendship and professional ties with Weinstein. While they acknowledge perceiving him as a bully and a womanizer, they claim to be unaware of the full extent of the allegations brought forth in the essay. During the interview, Damon made a significant admission. He was aware of Weinstein's Gwyneth Paltrow before she began filming Emma in 1996. I knew the story about Gwyneth from Ben because he was with her after Brad, but I knew that they had come to whatever agreement or understanding that they had come to. She had handled it and she was, you know, the first lady of Miramax. Reeling a troubling aspect of the entertainment industry's culture of silence, this admission holds immense significance. To give context, Paltrow had previously recounted her distressing encounter with Weinstein. In her account, she described how he invited her to a hotel under the pretense of a work meeting, only to make unwelcome advances and propose they adjourn to the bedroom for massages. Paltrow, a young woman of merely 22 at the time, felt paralyzed with fear during the encounter and later confided in her then-boyfriend, Brad Pitt, who boldly confronted Weinstein. Damon's acknowledgement of his awareness regarding Paltrow's ordeal raises crucial questions about complicity and silence. While he maintained that he never discussed it with Paltrow, he did disclose that Ben Affleck, another actor closely connected to Weinstein, had informed him about the situation. Damon recounted that Affleck had conveyed there was an unspoken agreement between Weinstein and Paltrow, wherein Weinstein had treated her with utmost respect afterward. This revelation illuminates the intricate web of relationships and power dynamics that permeated the realm of Hollywood. Damon's silence, as suggested by Joe Rogan, may have stemmed from the fear of losing support from a powerful figure who played a pivotal role in his ascent to stardom. It is alleged that Damon even went so far as to conceal Weinstein's misdeeds. In 2017, Sharon Waxman, the founder of The Rap, accused the New York Times of retracting a similar story in 2004 due to immense pressure exerted by influential individuals such as Damon and Russell Crowe. Waxman's account centered around a Miramax executive based in Italy who was allegedly compensated solely for facilitating Weinstein's misconduct. She added, after intense pressure from Weinstein, which included having Matt Damon and Russell Crowe call me directly to vouch for Lombardo, and unknown discussions well above my head at the Times, the story was gutted. I was told at the time that Weinstein had visited the newsroom in person to make his displeasure known. I knew he was a major advertiser in the Times and that he was a powerful person overall. In response, Damon denied having any knowledge regarding the subject of Waxman's story. He mentioned that Weinstein had informed him that the paper was targeting Lombardo with unfavorable coverage. Harvey said Sharon Waxman is writing a story about Fabrizio and it's really negative. Can you just call and tell her what your experience with Fabrizio was? So I did, and that's what I said to her. It didn't even make the piece that she wrote. As I recall, her piece just said that Russell and I had called and relayed our experience with Fabrizio, he said. Joe Rogan's unfiltered style has consistently produced captivating content, and this occasion was no exception. He fearlessly delved deep into the captivating world of Tinseltown, illuminating intriguing connections and interactions that have stirred up quite a buzz among many. So he'd say, hey, I'm gonna make you a star. Joe Rogan made some shocking claims about the potential involvement of male actors, such as the renowned Matt Damon, in activities that went beyond professional networking. According to Rogan, these actors may have pursued unconventional paths in their quest for fame and success. He describes a setup where this became the norm for making movies and achieving fame. Meanwhile, fans have been vocal about their opinions regarding Matt Damon's alleged association with Weinstein. One particular person wrote, I wouldn't say Matt Damon is a bad guy necessarily, but he looks out for himself. He's been friends and connected to a lot of horrible people, but doesn't say anything or says he didn't know. He stays in his lane to the point of letting horrible stuff happen. Another individual discussed the perils associated with revealing the secrets of the esteemed Hollywood circle. They said, let's be honest, if Matt Damon or Ben Affleck would have spoken up at the time this happened, they probably would have been erased from Hollywood. Regardless, Rogan's hypothesis urges us to ponder the experiences of fellow male actors who might have been coerced, manipulated, or pressured into engaging in relationships or transactions that defy their personal boundaries. While it is vital to remember that these claims are speculative, they emphasize the necessity for a more extensive discourse on power and coercion within the film industry. 
Joe Rogan's fearlessness in delving into these uncomfortable and controversial subjects is a poignant reminder that the matter transcends gender boundaries. It prompts us to question the moral limits actors are willing to surpass in their quest for stardom, as well as the impact of power dynamics on the trajectories of their professional journeys. But what are your thoughts on this? Now, do you think that the film industry is a breeding ground for abuses of power? Or do you believe it's an arena for healthy competition among talented individuals? What solutions, if any, do you think should be implemented to safeguard against unethical practices? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you ever need to satisfy your gossip cravings or simply want to know what to anticipate from your favorite stars and movie series, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And remember, I love you guys so much. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video. All in the next video.